welcome back to another video. Uh, this week we're going to be doing a couple of Nissan related things. I have a KA24 on the stand. I'm going to be putting the timing assembly back together. We just put pistons and rods in it a couple days ago. And uh, this one's from a boosted S14. Uh, we'll be putting it all together, putting the turbo back on, upgrading his intake manifold to a much better design one for boost from a company called Excessive Manufacturing. Um, yeah, so anyway, we'll be doing a bunch of stuff on the 240SX. Okay, so here's that KA24 that we'll be assembling today. I've got all of this stuff here I gotta clean up and stick on. And, uh, I might explain a little of this, but I don't want to bore you guys too much with the details. Uh, I'll just explain the tricky parts and uh, then we'll just go ahead and assemble it together. I remember I was saying that the KA24 is getting a really nice new intake manifold. This is his old one right here. You can see it's like two pieces, has like a gajillion connections and hoses and wiring looms and like hot sensors for whatever and EGRs and just tons and tons and tons of crap. And the runners are super, super long and the plenum is just not very big. It's kind of small. So. This new one, voila, oh it's so nice, so good. It retains the stock throttle body, which is nice for calibration, I don't really have to do anything. Plus, uh, I believe the stock K24 is still like relatively good size. It's like at least two and a half inches, so that should be good. And uh, yeah, I mean you have to just put some bolts in here and figure out the gasketing and stuff, but there's plenty of ports for like fittings and uh, sensors and the stock coolant steam port. It also came with this really nice uh, thermal gasket, which is awesome. So uh, yeah, I guess the only question I had is uh, if the stock fuel rail fits, I'm not really sure, or if we have to do something different with that, but. All right, so the K24 is like a little bit more complicated on timing than like an average vehicle simply because there's two chains and they use like a series of like colors and dots and <sighs> silly things for SX motor together. We've been here on the dyno getting it running. I, I forgot to film like a lot of stuff. Basically we're halfway through the dyno tune. It just made 297 horsepower on 50% duty cycle. We're going to 80% duty cycle and as long as we have enough fuel there's 760 cc injectors so we're on 72% duty. If we get to like 90% we gotta stop but as long as we can get to like maybe 330 horsepower, 340, I'll be quite happy. So we're gonna like pretty much full send this little eBay turbo on this 2.4 liter rebuilt motor. Kind of see what it does. But uh, I really, really like the throttle response and uh, I'm absolutely loving this new intake manifold. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in the car uh, and get back on this laptop right now and uh, see what we get. Oh my goodness, that was crazy. Uh, I went to 80% duty and it obviously overshot our target. Uh, we're making uh, about 310 torque now, which before we were only making 290 horsepower and uh, 323 foot pounds, or uh, gosh, 323 horsepower, but we're only making it at like 5,600 RPM. <laughs> so it was gonna like go. Uh, the only problem is it hit boost cut pretty violently and I, I think we broke the eBay turbo. Um, let me show you what I mean. This little guy is the actual uh, nut that's on the end of the snout. And when we hit the boost cut, it actually spun off. And now this thing is actually loose of the shaft. So, what do you do when you break your eBay turbo? You just throw the nut back on and uh, send it again, right? I mean, it doesn't seem like... Uh, 
Doesn't seem like we have much to lose at this point. Yeah, if you can just get in there and tighten it, then you might have to try to like, right well, use us. Yeah, you might have to, <laughs> this is gonna be horrible. I mean, technically speaking, we can take off the back housing, but that's so hot right now and it's broken already. So let's just do some super uh, crazy stuff and just wedge something in there and get it tight enough to make another pull. You wanna buy a precision turbo? I got one in the office. Yeah. <laughs> For the cheap price of only like $2,000. It's not spinning. Try it again, try anti-lag. Not making boost. Yeah, I don't think it's making boost. I think something's broke, like maybe the whole shaft. Oh yeah. Dang it, that did not work at all. We're gonna have to regroup and get them a new turbo. Dang, we were doing really, really good too. That last number was super promising. Like more than 300 torque at like 5,500 RPM basically, 5,600. Freaking eBay turbos! CX Racing. Yeah, CX Racing is now CX broken. Okay, check out this graph. This is what's actually crazy, is look at how much more horsepower we probably would have made if it just uh, was able to carry that pull all the way out. Okay, so this is the graph right before where we made uh, like 300, or 250 torque and about 300 horsepower. And this one we made 310 torque and we're cut off right here where we hit the boost cut at uh, 323 horsepower. But if you think about this, uh, that gap there and where this was going, man, we were probably approaching like 375, 380 maybe. Um, that would have been crazy. On this super, super little baby like eBay Turbo. Like how freaking rad is that? Uh, it's really too bad that it, it broke. We just hit the cut and uh, that was kind of finished it off. So it's a bummer. But on a good note, uh, we're going to order him a Precision. Should be here in like a week or so and uh, we'll put it uh, back on the dyno and see what we get. Okay, I was going to end the video except that uh, it's been like a day or two and I haven't finished the video anyway. <clears throat> and I've had a chance to get the turbo off of the car and I have never actually seen a turbo blow up in this way before. Not on just like one random dyno pole. So basically on the dyno pole all that we knew was the front wheel the nut had come off and we didn't really know what happened. And if you look at the video, you can see like towards the end of the pole, all of a sudden you see like just black, like fuel smoke coming out the end. So it's like it was making good boost and then like the boost disappeared. And I'm pretty sure I know why now and I'm gonna show you in just a second, but this is actually crazy. I've never seen, I've never seen this before. You guys gotta check this out. Okay, so when we pulled off the turbo manifold, the first thing we noticed is some of these pieces and we were like, what in the world are these pieces from? And then once we actually got in there, look at this freaking carnage. There's not even a turbo wheel in here anymore. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. It literally came loose and just destroyed itself into shrapnel and like we have no turbo left. Like It's just like crazy. Like we actually tightened the nut on the front one. I thought maybe we broke this shaft that goes to the turbo, but apparently the shaft is okay, we just broke every single blade off the back wheel for the turbo to go. Because, oh my goodness, that was just like the craziest thing ever. Holy cow. That's actually like a, like a little oil shield thing inside the turbo. It actually ate through that and melted it. Oh my gosh, the carnage to the mint, like the inside of the housing is... Oh, more pieces! This is crazy! See guys, this is why we can't have anything nice. We just break everything. <laughs> this car was actually going perfect and I was super excited. We're making like decent numbers. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look, there it is. I wonder why we weren't making any boost. Oh my goodness. See, I thought we broke the shaft, but we kind of did. It's like sheared off. I guess the title of my video is not a lie. I broke a turbo in half. <laughs> and it's basically in half right here. Oh man, what do we have here? Brand new freaking precision turbo. This is gonna be awesome. 
Okay, as you guys saw before, we broke the turbo on this 240SX in half, uh, the eBay one, and so we decided to upgrade to a really, really nice ball bearing precision unit. So, this one is like a pretty common size. I'm sure everybody's heard of a 6262. Well, that's what we got. It just made sense. This motor's definitely big enough to power it. And um, we were able to order it in some custom sizes so that we could keep the fitment with the manifold exactly how it was. Let me show you, I'll explain. Okay, so when you're ordering a turbo, sometimes you can order different size front covers and different size back housings. So on this one, they offer a four inch inlet and a two and a half inch outlet, which is the bigger one. It usually has the little holes in the front, the ported shroud. Um, this one is one size smaller. This is the two inch outlet and the three inch inlet, but it still has the same turbo wheel on the inside. So this is still a 62, 62 just like the other cover that you're used to seeing, and it will make the same horsepower. I don't believe the cover is actually a limit. Um, but this one, we needed it to be the smaller cover because, as you can see right here, we're like super close to the spark plug wires, and the next size up would have just put us into it, and it would have been a mess. So we didn't want to redo the whole turbo kit just to switch turbos, especially when this thing was already making great power. <clears throat> the other thing that we did was we kept the exhaust side it's a .63 AR housing, which is the same size housing as the eBay Turbo. So the spool characteristics should be similar, which is very important on this car because the main objective of this customer is just to <clears throat> mostly go sideways and shoot as many flames as possible. It's kind of like a, just like a fun cruise around drift type car. So he's got the welded differential on the back. And uh, you know, it's not made for all out top end speed, so we didn't need a huge back housing. Okay, we're uh, just about finished um, tuning the 240SX, and it did pretty good. We ran out of fuel injector, unfortunately, but we were able to get it to barely touch about 18 pounds, and uh, 330 horsepower, and 280 foot-pounds of torque, approximately. And it's super, it's super dead smooth. Like, the torque curve and the power curve is going to be nice. You know, it's going to feel like it's pulling pretty hard all the way to redline. And keep in mind, we're only revving this to like just under 7,000 RPM, so it will probably continue to make more if I revved a little farther. But since it's a new motor, I don't want to lean on it too hard until he breaks it in a little bit. So it'll be kind of fun for him this time. Uh, he'll be able to drive it around on low boost and hit the defrost button for the high boost, and it'll go from about 15% duty up to about 50%. So we still got a little room to go. Maybe next time we'll get some injectors and make a little bit more. But anyway, I'm pretty happy with the results. We're gonna go drive it and see uh, see what it's like, and then uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs>